I was gonna make pancakes, but I can't seem to find Way them. ahead of you, babe. Check it. Since when did we start nuking our pancakes? Since you were in a hospital, I had to implement some shortcuts. Like when we ran out of soap and you gave me a bath with the dishes? Or when we were all out of rubber bands and you used zip ties on my hair? Or when you couldn't help me with my homework and we had to get help from the Postmates guy? Hey, modern problems require modern solutions. I'm gonna act like I didn't hear That's any a clip of, of Young Love. It's a new original animated series streaming right now on Max. And it gives an honest, heartfelt, and comedic glimpse into the lives of African-American millennial parents voiced by Kid Cudi and Issa Rae. It's based on the popular book turned Academy Award winning short film, Hair Love, from creator, writer, and executive producer, Matthew A. Cherry. And this morning, Matthew joins us now to talk about this series and more. Good morning to you. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Good to have you on. I have to say you've done it again. I've been reading the reviews, looking at people commenting on your posts across social media. People are saying not only is it good, but, it, but it's needed. And I noticed, too, it's not solely for kids and not solely focused on adults, and you managed to kind of straddle the line between the two. How was it finding that balance? Yeah, look, you know, the tone was super hard just because... Obviously, we're dealing with a, a bit of a serious issue in the short film with Angela's illness, but also we have a picture book that, you know, parents read to their kids. So we really wanted to do something that we didn't alienate all the fans of the picture book and also the people that love the fact that we dealt with the real issue in the short film. So it, we ended up just really finding this co-viewing kind of for the entire family balance, which you really don't get a chance to see a ton in animation. That is so true, but we know that happens in real life. So, I mean, your show is certainly multidimensional. You mentioned the tough subject matter that you deal with along with the cancer diagnosis. I know it's also a homelessness, a social media exploitation. Out of all the topics you touched upon, which one was the most challenging? Honestly, all of them, just because, you know, unlike live action with animation, you're dealing with like a two or three year lead time. So we're doing our writer's room in 2020, but we know when the show is not going to come out to 22, 2023. So you're just really trying to not be so in the moment with topics that may not be relevant two and three years from now. And so I think it was it, it allowed us to really free ourselves about just like, all right, let's go with what's hot now and just kind of focus on issues that have always always been happening a bit in our society and also things that will continue to happen. So, you know, themes like imposter syndrome, um, you know, like you mentioned, exploitation, you know, obviously just, you know, different gender roles kind of from all the different uh, multi-generational dynamics that come to like how to parent. Do you, do you do hard parenting versus soft parenting? Because all these different things that are pretty, they're pretty much are never going away just because everybody has different parenting styles. So, that really was uh, probably the hardest part, but also I think the thing that ended up making our show very universal. I also love the voices. I mean, I was excited for Issa, some of the other characters, and then I heard Loretta Devine, who has one of the most distinctive uh, voices in all of entertainment. Talk about assembling this all-star cast. Yeah, it, it just was great. You know, voice over work, especially during the pandemic, because that's when we uh, basically were in full production with the show, 2020 and beyond. So, uh, you know, voice over work was really great just because people didn't have to really be in the same room with us. Uh, it was a combination of personal relationships and just reaching out to people. Like, Loretta, like, who's not a fan of Loretta Devine? Like, she's so iconic, you know, yeah. from girls until the day. Uh, Harry Lennox is from Chicago. I'd worked with him on my first film. Um, Scott Muscutty, he's so great because he really just represents Steve in a lot of the ways. He works in music, but also he's a young father. He's from the Midwest. And then Issa Rae, she's just such, got such a classic voice and also she's so relatable. And then with uh, Brooke Conway, who plays Zuri, we just really wanted a girl who just had the energy, but also could hit a lot of the more adult lines that we were trying to give, throw mm -hmm. her away. <laughs> and also, I want to say congratulations to you. I know uh, your little girl, Theory Marie, will turn one, I want to say, next month. Did I get that right? October 11th. Yeah, oh, you brought so much popularity to, to girl dads with your book, Hair Love. So I want to know about a year in, what has life been like for you as her girl dad? 
it, it's just been really incredible. Yeah. She she's so so smart. Like she's just posing. Like we're not even telling her what to do. She's just like <laughs> a whole little model. So it's just been great having somebody that you that really depends on you, and you have to really make sure that you're stepping up and uh, being present. And you're certainly doing that with your character, Zuri. Thanks so much, Matthew. My co-anchor, Jeanette Reyes, says hello to you as well. I want to pass that along. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll pass it. Thanks so much. Just a reminder, the first four episodes of Young Love are streaming right now on Max, and four more new episodes drop tomorrow. Holly.